Hey everybody, Christy here today for Kindred Stamps and today we're going to do a spring inspired card doing some no line watercoloring. So I am using this adorable little skunk from the Lil Stinker stamp set and I'm just going to set him up here. Now I'm using a stamping tool. You do not have to do that. You can use a regular acrylic block if you don't have the stamping tool. I just did it because um, I wanted to make sure with the ink that I was using, I got a really clean impression. So I'm using some fade out ink. Um, this is good for no line watercoloring. However, if you don't have it, don't worry. You can use any lightly colored ink or any other ink that will blend well when we start adding water. So if you have distress inks or other inks that are similar to that, that would work too. So off camera, I stamped the um, cute little skunk again and I stamped him in black ink on some masking paper. So masking paper is kind of like a giant post-it note. Um, it's a little bit sticky on back, but it removes well because I knew that I was going to be using it later. So you could just use the post-it note if you want to do that. And then I added the sentiment here just using some black ink, and it says, so stinking cute. And just because I knew that I was going to be adding some water to it, I covered it up with some clear embossing powder to protect it. They didn't want to go through all this work and do all this coloring and then have our sentiment smear. So the clear embossing powder protects it. So now I'm just going to go and I'm going to start kind of coloring everything in. So I am using some watercolor markers. And just off to the side, I'm using a, a glass craft mat. I'm just kind of scribbling colors down and then picking them up using a water brush. If you don't have these supplies, don't worry. You can use regular watercolors. If you have other um, watercolor markers, not exactly the same as these, that will work. If you don't have a glass mat, that's okay. Use an acrylic black. Most of us have those for stamping. Or you could even scribble on the back of an acrylic sheet that comes like on the back of your stamp sets. Anything that is slick should work, even like a laminated piece of cardstock or whatever. So slick surface and scribble down. Um, if you are not using the markers and you're using regular watercolors, that works too. Um, so you can see what I do is I kind of add a light layer of color first. So I come in very, um, you wanna say like light handed, I use a light, it's called a wash. So when you're just kind of covering everything with a light color or sometimes no color at all, that's called a wash. So I just come in with a light color wash in the areas that I'm working in. And then I come back in and I add the darker areas. So keep in mind um, when you're doing no line watercoloring or really any watercoloring, it might take a little bit of time for your image to start taking shape. So don't get frustrated because if you're just going to go in and do it, um, you know, like once or twice, you're going to look at it and go, oh, I don't like this. This isn't what I was looking for. When you watercolor, you have to remember there's usually layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of color. That's how we get that watercolor look that we all love that's got like all the dimension and everything to it. It didn't just come from laying down color once. It came from doing it multiple times. So they have that undertone of the one color and then you come back in with the darker. I mean, you might even come back in a few more times if it's needed. So stay patient and practice. If you've never done it before, it's very easy to do, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. So keep that in mind. So because I inked with that, or I stamped with that fade out ink, um, his eyes and nose and mouth kind of went away. So I just came in with a black pen and just redrew that back in. So now remember I talked about that mask or you can use a post-it note and stamp it on there and trim it out. I wanted to protect everything I just colored. So that's why I put that mask down. So I like the masking paper because it's a little bit thicker than a normal post-it note. Um, it protected my image a little bit better. So what you can see, now I'm just coming in and I'm watercoloring and I'm being super messy. So that's part of the fun of watercoloring is you could be precise like I did with that image or you could be loose and messy and it works no matter what. There is really no wrong way to watercolor. Just kind of like there's no wrong way in art period, right? No matter what it is, it's correct because it's art. So it's always subjective. So keep that in mind. Don't worry. Don't constrain yourself and be like, oh, it's got to look this way. No, no, no. You're watercoloring. Just do it any which way you feel and it will work. So once that was dry, I flicked some water onto there. Um, I also uh, reflicked some of that color onto there too. So I have kind of like an interesting background that really focuses on the little stinker guy. 
So I just peeled off that mask and then when everything was dry, I came back in and I decided I wanted to add a little bit of glimmer. So I used a sparkle marker and I just put some on his belly and some on his tail. And then I wanted to add a few highlights because skunks have some white on them. And I felt like it kind of got lost when I watercolored. So I came back in with a white jelly roll pen and just added a couple little um, extra additions on there. So, and your jelly roll, keep in mind, um, you can kind of blend that out with water too if you make any mistakes. There is the final card. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I can't wait to see what you create. So see you out there in Flagland and have a great day.